Mr. Vince Cerf, which is exactly creativity in your opinion? Creativity for me is, is breaking through conventional thinking to try to find alternative ways of making something happen. Now remember I'm an engineer, so what's important is making something work. And creativity is finding ways to make things work that nobody else has tried before. That's risky. And it's not always everyone who's willing to take risk because you might fail. You have to be willing to fail in order to be creative. And uh, sometimes we are divided between uh, the view of brilliant individual minds or very big organization of knowledge, which is the best content in your opinion. So I think creativity happens in small groups of people really. Individuals come up with brilliant ideas, but my personal experience has always been working with one or two other people, or maybe even three or four other people, uh, you get such a wonderful divergent varying view of, of the problem that the ideas start to, to uh, interact with each other. And so for me, working with at least one other person uh, brings out the kind of creative thinking and alternative ideas that you need in order to solve problems in a unique way. Creativity and speed, which is the boost of our age, which is exactly the relationship between these two elements, in your opinion? Well, I think we believe that uh, new ideas and inventions are coming along faster than we can possibly uh, accommodate. Although recently I was looking back at the inventions of the 19th century and the uh, early 20th, And when you think about it, it must have been pretty shocking. The automobile, uh, heavier than air flight, the uh, discovery of relativity, uh, the use of electricity and telephones, the invention of radio, all of this happening in the late 18th and uh, late 19th and early 20th century. I think that the rate at which innovation happens is partly a function of the um, state of technology at the time. And right now we have a great deal of knowledge to apply. And so we're seeing an almost exponential increase in the uh, new, new ideas coming along that we now have to learn how to adapt to. Do you think that the creator uh, has in his mind, on, uh, in his own mind, the need, the objective or need or curiosity? So, well, curiosity is part of creativity because you have to ask yourself, is that going to work? Is that solution going to work? Or how can I do this differently? Uh, for me personally, as an engineer, it, the problem is the essence. And figuring out how to state the problem often is the key to finding a solution to it. And so uh, in, in mathematics, you might have very badly formed equations and you can't figure out how to work with them. And uh, a transformation of variables to restate the equation sometimes makes it obvious how to solve the problem. So curiosity is very critical. Uh, to creativity, but so is the statement of the problem that you're trying to solve, assuming that you're trying to solve a problem in the first place. Which is the future of creativity? Well, look, human uh, beings have been creative from the, since their uh, evolution, and I think that uh, the only way that we survive, and certainly the only way we will survive the global warming questions and other things, is to become increasingly creative about solving the problems we've created ourselves. Could creativity be a bridge between advanced countries and developing countries? Indeed, I think creativity is the essence of linking the developing and the developed world. The same percentage of intelligent and creative people exist in every country in the world. It's the, the statistics are uniform. The difference is that often the resources to make use of that creativity don't exist in the developing world and we need to help those people take advantage of their ideas and their creativity. That's the most important link we can make. A milestone sentence from Vint Cerf to the young generations. Well, to the young generation, I would say, first of all, don't be afraid to fail. It's okay, you're young, you'll recover. And second, don't believe everything some old and respected scientist tells you because he or she might be wrong. <laughs>